Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is linear algebra. Today I would like to talk about a very important concept in classical geometry, the concept of an isometry. Um, why is it important in classical geometry? Well, we will see that it preserves the lengths, right? And lengths is something classical geometry really likes. It's also important in other parts of mathematics, but it kind of originates in classical geometry. So let's just jump right into it with two examples. So here I have a matrix. I will zoom into the matrix in a second. And well, what is this matrix doing? It's just a rotation. It rotates by 225 degrees. So 225 degree rotation. Um, and as you can see, so here's a blue vector. It ends up down here. Up. As you can see, this still has the same length. And here's a black vector, it ends up here. And as you can see, the black vector still has the same length. Okay, so isometry should be a length preserving action. That's the definition. And this rotation certainly preserves lengths. Um, it funnily also preserves angles, but I'm not talking about preserving angles right now. I'm talking about preserving lengths. Here's another example. It's a, this is a reflection. So I reflect along this middle green line. Down here is the matrix. I will zoom in in a second. But as you can see, here, the reflection clearly preserves lengths. So here's my black vector. It goes to itself. Uh, it go, goes to a vector that is um, not itself, but has the same length. And same for blue. And again, angles are preserved, but that's what I not, don't care about right now. I care about preserving lengths. So that's an isometry. Isometry, let's say in this Euclidean setup, is just it preserves lengths. And my uh, rotation here and my reflection are both isometries. Um, okay, rotation and reflections are nice, and kind of we want to study them in a more general context. That's the whole idea. But let's have a look at them. So here's my um, no, here's my green one, the reflection. Uh, that's how it looks like as a matrix. Okay, don't look at the entries too much. That's just how it looks like as a matrix. Good. And the rotation here, the blue one is here. Again, don't look too much at the entry, it doesn't matter so much. The point is something funny you will observe and some really nice criteria to, to check whether a map, a linear map is an isometry, whether it preserves um, lengths, is we observe that in both cases, actually the transpose, which is a very easy operation, right? You just exchange those two entries in this case, is the inverse, which is a much more complicated operation. Um, the question, so transpose equals inverse holds here. And the question is kind of, hmm, is this a, is this a fluke, a coincidence, or is this a more general pattern? It will turn out that this is the more general pattern. And in some sense, you can use this at least in the for real and Euclidean matrices as a definition of an isometry. So just remember transpose equals inverse. And I write it like this, T equals minus one, because if I would write it as a matrix, it would look like this. T uh, matrix, uh, a matrix transpose equals matrix inverse. Okay, but these are kind of the linear uh, operations you can think of. And if you think about it a little bit, um, linear operation that preserve lengths in 2D, and we're talking about Euclidean lengths, so it's the usual one you would expect, then um, there's not much to be said. So that's just what it is. Then these are, these are the two. Um, in general, uh, if you care about the planar Euclidean isometries. You have the two from before. So here's my blue one, and here's my green one. So rotation and reflection, as you can see, but there's also translation. OK, 
Okay, maybe I should. So that's also the, the black one, the translation. Okay, so you can translate uh, a shape. And of course, you just translated it, right? You just moved it a little bit to the side. So of course, uh, lengths are still preserved. And by the way, angles as well. But again, I'm only talking about lengths. And there's something called a glide reflection. And that's, well, what, it's exactly what it says. You first reflect and then you translate. So it's kind of my green black operation. It's called a glide reflection. Um, uh, so we have the black operation, the translation, the green operation, the reflection the blue operation, the rotation, and the black-green operation, the translation, uh, the glide reflection. And these are all planar, uh, all Euclidean plane isometries. Okay, but that's a fact, that's not true. That, that, that's a non-trivial fact. Um, and, well, an isometry is defined as exactly what you think it is. You have two inner product spaces in general, you can make this more general. You would have two norm spaces, but it doesn't matter. So you have two inner product spaces, B and M, and an isometry is exactly what you think it is. It preserves the lengths, and the lengths in the inner product space is just the inner product of B with itself. And there might be you might want to call it a linear isotope uh, uh, isometry if it's a linear map. So here those two are linear because they preserve the origin, and not these are not linear. But not so bad. Uh, so generally, would distinguish that. Actually, a fun fact that was I was they all the time in this in that product space is actually isometry is preserved angles as well. Um, that's not how an isometry is defined. In some circumstances, you, you might not even have the notion of an angle. But um, in in this definition, the the isometry are also angle preserved. Um, and the condition is actually equivalent to the matrix being its dual matrix. What dual means depends on the context, as you can see in C and D. So in C, for example, if, if you're in real space, or in D, if you're in complex space, uh, the two conditions boil down to being what is called orthogonal or unitary. And orthogonal is exactly what you've seen before. The transpose is the inverse. Extremely simple condition to check. Really beautiful um, that those maps are the if and only if, so if and only if, uh, a, a, a linear map is an isometry, even only if this is satisfied, easy to check. And for, for complex, it's not much more complicated. You just take the, uh, the complex conjugate. So inverse is a complex conjugate of the transpose. Still super easy to check. So isometries are the uh, lengths um, preserving maps between your spaces where you have a notion of a length, like in a product space. And isometries are, as I said, studied implicitly at least in classical geometry for for thousands of years. So this picture here is actually from an, from, from an Egypt grape, I think. So this is very old. And this is one of the wallpaper, so-called wallpaper groups. There are 17 of these and they have certain names. So this one here is P4M. And um, on the right-hand side, you can, you can see how P4M is defined, but basically it's, it's built out of rotations, uh, reflections, translations, and light uh, reflections. So those wallpaper groups, it gives you some nice wallpapers and um, they appear throughout the history of mankind, of humankind. Um, they are built out of isometries. So no wonder that isometries are an important concept in uh, mathematics if they are already an important concept in arts. But that's all I wanted to say about isometries for now. Uh, so that's it for today and I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you next time.